Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a short video looking at aerodynamics again. You may have seen me flying shuttles, uh, you may have seen them flying in. Well, somebody mentioned that the spacecraft, uh, or Ferrum Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program indeed, do not model lifting bodies correctly. Actually, Ferrum does make an attempt to model lifting bodies, so I thought I would make this little version, or my tribute, let's say, to the Dream Chaser spacecraft. And as you can see, it has a very short, stubby wings and is flying flying rather well. In fact, it's probably flying too well. Uh, but nevertheless, I get it down on the surface. And uh, what you can see, if I turn this around, you're going to see that, yeah, that I cheated here. What I did was I took delta wings and folded them inside the fuselage. So I have much larger wings on this than it would seem. Uh, so I got to thinking, while this works very nicely, it does seem to fly far too well. Could I actually build something that worked like a real lifting body? Now, this is using a slightly older version of Ferrum Aerospace. This is this is version 0.10, and I noticed that some updates have been made since then, so caveat may be that this does not work. But I thought, let's try and build a flying machine, uh, a, an aerodynamic flying machine, which uses only structural parts. And uh, you know, obviously a couple of other bits and pieces. We're using some batteries there because we are going to need to feed the reaction wheels in that command pod so that it flies correctly. We're going to need some landing gear, obviously, because we want to land it, right? And uh, get it the right way around. We have uh, some structural elements, mostly fuselage sections. We have some uh, girders so we can attach the wheels to, so we have, you know, triangular um, landing gear and uh, yeah I guess I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what else to do I put some bat some solar cells on there to feed those uh, reaction wheels make sure the battery never runs out and then on the front I stick another fuselage section so I think that was the main space aircraft on on the back of that we need to actually launch it into the air so we're going to use a solid rocket motor with a some wings because of course we need wings to keep this thing straight in the atmosphere we can't entirely rely on uh, blind faith that this thing will fly um, some people might argue that this uh, spacecraft will fly because it's so darn ugly the ground will repel it but uh, you know we're putting a lot of faith in this indeed we have uh, air guard Kerman is putting his faith in this we're flat traveling through the sound barrier now. We are committed. We can't turn that engine off. And besides, we are going high, high, high. It's too late to let go and just let gravity dra drag us back. Okay, detached. And now we are going to try and fly this thing like an aircraft. So that means we want to bring it down to a somewhat aerodynamic dive. And I think I've overdone it just a little there. Remember, there are no control surfaces on this, which makes it completely unrealistic, right? <laughs> you know, at least a, at least lifting bodies have control surfaces. I didn't want to include any control surfaces on it because it's pretty easy to demonstrate that you can make a uh, thing that flies with lift using just control surfaces. So I wanted to exclude those completely. Instead, I have a cockpit which has, you know, reaction wheels inside it or the Kerbal version of reaction wheels or which are ridiculously overpowered but nevertheless that will be fine for this demonstration so I notice I'm coming down slightly to the right of the runway so naturally I start to turn the spacecraft before realizing that there is actually no up vector on this so uh, I have to be more careful with the drive basically I, I, you have to fly this by offsetting the body from the velocity vector rather than rolling. The rolling makes absolutely no difference here. <laughs> you see me like trying to figure this out. I was concentrating quite intensely doing this. this is obviously not a live recording. In fact, I was I frankly wasn't 100% sure that this would work. So I, I'm starting to deviate and now trying to bring it back. But I think I'm running out of air to actually make this happen. At this point, I'm really running out of air and lifting the nose up. And you notice my vertical speed dropping very rapidly. In fact, we're down to minus 10 meters per second and we touch down. There you go. For those of you who say that lifting bodies do not work in Ferrum Aerospace or Kerbal Space Program, I present to you the least aerodynamic aircraft ever, entirely made of structural parts. No control surfaces, no wings, 
just pure cylindrical lifting body. Okay, so that was that was a Ferrum Aerospace 0.10. Well, I actually, after doing this, I thought maybe there's a newer version, and there is. So there's version 0.11, which is for you know. Uh, still for Kerbal Space Program 0.22. If you want to upgrade to 0.23, then you need 0.12. I mean, basically, this is this the most recent version that runs with my current Warp Drive Interstellar Quest install. So uh, they've reduced the uh, as- the lifting body effect a little in this release, and it got a little bit harder. So instead of having those little girders, I decided to. Uh, take the girders off and replace them with more structural fuselage. But nevertheless, it is possible to make this thing glide. And you can see, well, I mean, glide is a relative. Make this thing um, try to not hit the ground as fast as it could. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it is kind of funny to watch this. But, you know, the physics of this aren't necessarily wrong. What is wrong is the ridiculously high torque that the... Um, the crew cabins are able to sustain. In fact, the reaction wheels in Kerbal Space Program are way stronger than they should be. So here we go, coming up. Got to flare just as we come to the ground to try and kill the vertical speed. See, got it down under 10 meters per second, and that is a perfect touchdown using just uh, structural fuselage as my lifting bodies. Now, notwithstanding this uh, undercarriage failure, this is the older version of Ferrum Aerospace. The latest version nerfs things even more. This is version 0.12, and finally we seem to have some, uh, well, we don't seem to get very much lift out of this at all. Now, because this only runs with KSP 0.23, it means that you can actually use different fuselage members, and so I took, instead of having the structural fuselage, I used these... Uh, uh, fuel tanks, then of course I emptied them of fuel using the tweakable system. So we get a, a much wider vehicle for lower mass, and that may or may not help me. Apparently it does, I mean, it does help, because traveling with the, the previous designs just ended up pancaking into the ground and, and barely surviving. You can see that this is getting some horizontal motion. We're in a nose down 30 degree position, and our horizontal velocity, well, our our actual dive is a 70 degree dive, so this is pretty suicidal, given that we're moving like 120 something meters per second. Um, so yeah, the the thing does actually provide some lift here. Look, oh my goodness, our, li- our nose is actually, our velocity vector is coming up to a 60 degree dive. At some point we're going to have to flare and pull out of this dive, but uh, I'm not hopeful. I do not think that I will uh, get out of this particularly... Uh, with any particular level of reliability, let's see. No, I mean, you're you're basically falling sideways. There's almost no horizontal velocity to convert a flare from. But if you're lucky, the landing gear will absorb some of the impact and you might come out of this alive. But that is not really a recipe for lifting bodies. So what can you do if you want to have something that looks like a lifting body in the latest version of uh, Ferrum Aerospace? Well, you can cheat. You can uh, build an aircraft which has some wings built in, that, but they're mostly hidden. You see there's a couple of uh, control surfaces on the back now, and we're, uh, those will help a little, but we're still really relying on torque to keep this thing pointed. And you can see there is a single wing underneath, which actually makes it fly a lot like uh, you know a, a lifting body in that it has almost no lift at all. <laughs> Although this is empty of fuel, but... Uh, we're, we're going down in like a 30 degree dive and we'll just flare at the last minute and it'll kill off the velocity very quickly. In fact, it's hard to really arrest the vertical speed without stalling this. So there we go. Horizontal, we're starting to stall. Now, of course, this is using uh, stock landing gear as well. Using the B9 landing gear actually makes things easier because its mass is a lot lower. The mass of the landing gear, the default landing gear, is ridiculously high. It's like half a ton. I don't get it. And uh, I'm not happy with it, but hey, uh, I like the B9 gear because it's a lot lighter. So there we are. You see single wing there slung under the fuselage, hidden away, gives us the impression of something that could be flown back from space. But can we actually get a lifting body to work? A pure structural lifting body without cheating? Well, um, it turns out that in my previous attempts, I mean, obviously in my previous attempts, I was just, you know, going straight towards the ground and trying to get some horizontal velocity. But... If you remember, I was launching it using this rocket motor, using this solid rocket motor, and if you do it just right, you can kind of 
uh, make sure you're flying sideways fast enough. So you have just enough horizontal speed or you have an excess of horizontal speed. Whoa, yes, that was great. Uh, and look, here we get in and oh, almost, almost get this straight. Yes, oh, no, yes, yes. Of course, that is all old me because this is all post commentary. But, you know, this is a lot of fun trying to fly these things horizontally and not kill yourself is a quite impressive uh, thing to attempt. I don't want. Let's try that again. Pretty much same vehicle design. That is now the B9 landing gear, as I said. It's a lot lighter. It's like uh, one fifth of the mass of the landing gear that the stock game uses. And it's a whole lot stronger as well. So. If you're using B9, I don't know why you would ever use a stock landing gear. Uh, I guess the stock landing gear has lights built in, but magical lights that don't use power. Okay, once again, let's see if we can do this. We're going to try and see if we can get some sort of control here. It's more like a kind of controlled falling rather than anything else. Landing gear out. Nose pitched up. Pointed in roughly the right direction. Ah, there you see another lifting body landing. I mean, it, it is almost no effect these days. Uh, I don't know if they're going to change this again or if we're going to start seeing some like parts that are really designed around lifting bodies. Because, uh, you know, that would be kind of nice. Um, you know, you can really, of course, go to town using these structural panels. The structural panels are quite large and should have a large cross section. So they might function like wings. Let's find out. Uh, I'm just going to keep the landing gear down this time, incidentally, <laughs> because I don't see that I'm going to be travelling far enough with this landing gear to matter. Ooh, look at the wobble there. This thing kind of looks like a fish or sort of a manta ray. I don't know what it is. Notice I have the tail sections at the front as well, because those are super lightweight and large cross section. So this does actually fly like an aircraft. You can see that I'm flaring and it is controlling my rate of descent. So. So I don't think that qualifies as a lifting body anymore, but it's fun to try flying these things nevertheless. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.